Ever since the days of fishing for survival slowly turned into fishing for sport, mankind has had his hand in putting fin creatures where once they never existed. And boy, do I thank our forefathers for doing so. The striper bass is the fish that originated in the Atlantic Ocean and stretches from saltwater to fresh from Canada all the way to Florida. Over time and in the spirit of the unknown, these fish were transplanted to lakes, rivers, and streams all over the United States and since the species has flourished in the nutrient-rich waters. Today our journeys land us in the volunteer state, where hopes are high for a voluntary giant. Welcome to the hunt, striper bass edition. Well, everyone, the adventure has just begun and we're already lost. We've gone about three miles in the Denver airport here, back and forth trying to find our gate to get to Knoxville, Tennessee. And I'm getting excited. It's gonna, it's a long day of travel. Whenever you're flying across the country, you have to come prepared with a sound mind and a lot of patience, especially this day and age, traveling across the country. There's so many changes. It's winter time, so there's flight delays, there's snow, there's weather. But we're getting there and we're gonna get there late. We're gonna land at about 11 o'clock at night. And we got a two hour drive to our destination. Then we're meeting Kyle at 6.30 in the morning. So odds are we're only getting a couple hours of sleep tonight, but I always say a good fishing story always starts with a sleepless night beforehand. So time to get some food in our bellies, get some tequila in our bellies and get on the next plane. The journey begins, clear across the country, all the way to the far eastern side of the country. Honestly, we live on the west coast. We're going to northeastern Tennessee for this trip, and we're going about as far away from home as we could possibly get. You know, last year when Addicted came to Michigan to film with me, we were just sharing a lot of stories about different fisheries we love, and I just said how much I love East Tennessee and fishing down here, so I invited him to come down with me, and it was awesome Jordan was able to make the trip and come down and film with us for a few days. 1767, holy moly. This is an old place. Take the next left onto Holston Drive. Whoa, running off the road, addicts. In 1,000 feet, turn oh. left onto McClellan Street. McClellan, that's a little that's a little ironic. We're going fishing with Kyle McClellan and we're staying on McClellan Street. Suspicious? I think so. 158 everybody. We started today's journey at about 11 o'clock in the morning. 14 hour day of travel. That's what I call a fishing trip right there. But it's finally time to go to bed. We gotta be up and meet Kyle at 6.30 in the morning. I'm ready to fall face down in the muck and go to bed. Turn left onto Main Street, then turn left onto McClellan Street. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, addicts. Oh. See you in the morning, everybody. Hashtag. Mood. Really, deep down, I want you all to know how excited I really am here, but I'm so tired. But we're on time. That's what's important. Kyle, we're on our way. Oh. conscious of our health so we can keep coming on these trips where we don't sleep good morning good morning you need your receipt no thank you all right baby you have a good day thank you for it. i love starting my morning getting called baby how about you guys Good morning, sugar. Oh, <laughs> you get after oh, him? Oh, man, I think it is. Good to see you guys. Good. 
Man, funny finding you out here, eh? <laughs> so we're in the middle of Hi, East man. Tennessee. How are you? Good, how are you? Yeah. Couple hours of sleep. You got a couple hours of sleep. Uh -huh. I always, that's, <laughs> I always, that's my slogan to clients because you know, they're always like, oh, I didn't even sleep last night. I'm like, that's always how a good fishing story starts. Yep. You don't sleep the night before. <laughs> Hell yeah. We meet up, give the hugs. I get to see my bro once again, and I was super excited to come out here and hang out with Kyle because last time we saw him was in Michigan and honestly similar conditions where we were freezing our ass off. But I had so much fun with this guy, and I swear I always say he's a brother from another mother. When you see us next to side by side and and you know fishing on the river together, and the way we act and the way we interact, it's just like we're brothers. And I was so excited to get out here and see him once again and get a chance to fish with Kyle. There's a brisk one out here today. Wow. Damn it. Blowing snow. <laughs> 20 degrees. Hey. I thought we were in Tennessee. I'm getting a wind burn. Well, everybody, this looks like the cards we were dealt. As Kyle had told me earlier in the week as we started planning this, of course, we planned this trip a long time ago. He said, I don't think the first day is going to be that great of conditions to catch stripers. And uh, he wasn't lying. <laughs> So what do you think is going to happen here today, dude? Uh, we're going to go out and give it our best shot, but I don't know. I think it's going to probably be a grind. We'll give it as long as we can with the conditions we have, but we'll see what happens tomorrow. We got some rain coming in tonight. It's going to warm up tonight. Tomorrow is going to be about 42 degrees, so that's going to be a perfect day. But a lot of times on these cold days, from my experience, I haven't done too well on the stripes. But so. you did say there's other things to do. There's yes. trout fishing, there's tons of creeks and everything that feeds these lakes. And we yeah. can go do that if it gets too nasty out here, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. We'll do this until we're frozen, then we'll go hit some trout in the river. So there's options. These fish do not like barometric pressure changes, and especially when the temperature changes so much. The day before this storm came in, it was almost 50 degrees. That morning it's 17 out there and snowing. And so, you know, the hope was not very high, but we had to go try. We got the rods. <laughs> I guess we need some rods to go fishing. <laughs> Had them in the truck on thaw and get about a half mile down the lake and Mag's like, oh, we don't have the rods. <laughs> At least it was warmer coming back the other way, right? <laughs> going to be doing today guys is uh, mostly just kind of trolling with some live baits some shad some minnows might throw some jerk baits some swim baits and stuff like that or troll some umbrella rigs but we're going to start with this live bait and What's see where that takes us out? So, yeah these are just little planer boards and we're just putting uh yeah right live right live shad or behind it and these are just going to allow us to spread our lines out and just spread things out so we can cover more water and keep our lines spread out so we don't get tangled when we get fish on too so you can see how you just set that thing in the rod holder and that board, I don't know if you guys can see that out there in the glare, but it's just kind of pulling straight away from the boat. And then once you close that bail, it'll stay at that little angle and keep that thing away from the boat like that and keep that bait way out to that side of the boat. The other ones will go right behind us. So pretty neat. I've never used these planer boards before, so it'll be interesting to see how they work. So we're just going to give them a little cast back, hook our board on. We're just going to troll about somewhere around a mile an hour, half mile an hour. Seagulls are actually feeding pretty hard this morning. They are. We might get lucky here, everybody. <laughs> there's always that time. There's so many what ifs when you go fishing and all, especially, and you always had that positive guy in the group. What if we get him really good on bad conditions? And I was saying that, I was that guy going, what if we get him really good? But then we got out here and you can see all the seagulls in the air. Kyle was telling me that's kind of what you look for is most like bait fisheries like this. You look for all kinds of activity from mother nature to find where the fish are going to be and a lot of times it starts with the birds when it comes to fishing and as you can see we're like there's just these swarms of seagulls all around us and that's from these stripers chasing these shad around and and, and crashing on them and killing them and those fish float to the surface and all these seagulls come and pick them up so but they are all around us right now which is weird yep it's just like in a twilight zone turns into a giant feeding frenzy out here it gets exciting for sure Icicles are starting to form from the nostrils. My toes are cold. 
couldn't pack my mucks on this trip on this trip. That's too too big to pack. It's a chilly one. It's cold, one everybody. It's freaking cold. I don't know if you can tell. It actually looks kind of nice out here, but it's not. It's cold. It's about 20 degrees. The wind's <laughs> blowing about 20 mile an hour. I thought we weren't going to Michigan. Jeez. Yeah, it sure feels like home. Let me tell you. Now, if you guys haven't seen the Michigan video that we made with Kyle, it's uh, what's it called? It's called Michigan Steel, isn't it? Yeah, it's a movie we made, and we went out to his home homeland and and went around and he showed us around to some of the premier spots in Michigan. So if you guys haven't seen it, there's a link in the description. And if you haven't seen his channel XXL Chrome, be sure to go check it out. It's a lot of the a lot of the same kind of content that we make. So I know a lot of you addicts out there that like to watch our videos will love to watch watch Kyle and Mag's videos uh, from their home state of Michigan. It's pretty fun. I loved it back there, man. That was one of the coolest places. If I had to move east of the Mississippi, that's where I'd go. Yeah, we, sure. we're fortunate. We have a great fishery in Michigan. Yeah, and so much to do. We love uh, making videos around it and sharing it with you guys. Yeah. But I don't know how much longer we're going to give this, guys, because I'm freezing my butt off. <laughs> I need some more coffee and I need some warm food in my belly. Some cowboy beans. Yeah, some cowboy beans. I need some beans, cowboy baby. beans. <laughs> He had the blood and it never was a horse like the Tennessee stud. <laughs> you knew we had to go to the local fair. So I asked Kyle, I said, where is the best place to eat around here? We got to eat the best fisherman food possible. And he said, I got you a spot. It's called Bojangles. And here we are. There we go. Good. Dining in or dining out? Uh, we're going to dine in, I think. I'll get it, number 10, please. Gotta have the sweet tea. First thoughts. Fries are next level. I almost got like an old bay seasoning on them. There's enough salt to get me through the next week, but I think it's worth it. Oh yeah. I went with the classic chicken sandwich. Very nice crisp. Big pickles. Mmm. Watch out, Popeyes. You're going down. We kind of made our way into the Canyonlands and into the mountains of Tennessee here, and it really kind of killed down the wind. So we get out of the car. It's just a beautiful snow-covered landscape. The sun is shining, and it's just the perfect setting to go hit the river and start hiking around. Look at this, everybody. It's a winter wonderland out here. Great substitute. I'm glad we had this option today because that was pretty brutal out there in the boat. We would have given it our all, but that was that was just too cold to handle. But now we're getting a little foot workout, getting our blood pumping. Let's catch some fish. Well, as you guys can tell, this thing is awfully low. Super low. What is going on here? These rocks are all shiny and it's tripping me out. They almost look like a, like a metal of some sort. But, as you guys can tell, this river is super low. So we're, we're doing our part to hike around and kind of get up into any little deep pockets or something as these fish will be sitting. This place is completely 100% dam regulated. So the water goes up and down without, without any notice really, at certain times of day. Kyle has talked a lot about this place and how many trout that there are, but you can tell with a super low water like this, it might be challenging to just find spots that are deep enough to fish. These fish are gonna be everywhere, but we gotta just find where we can feasibly cast at them. So the hike is beautiful. We're warming up a little bit. I can't wait to get the line wet. Looking pretty good. Yeah. Paul. By that wood, haul out through there. There's some really nice trout in that structure over there. Just pretty much all through this flat though, behind in these weeds. Okay. What a setting, man. It's beautiful. Wind's not as bad down in here as I thought it was gonna be. I love the frosty, snowy trees yeah. on top of the mountain too. It really, it's, it's like an ideal Eastern or Midwestern setting for catching trout. It's like pristine little waterway too. The water's so clear and clean. 
You don't, oh, I just saw one roll. Did you? You don't think a lot about when you think about the, the what would you call this? This is the Midwest, this is, this is the East Coast. This is South, yeah. We're in the South, Southeast. South East Coast. Yep. Um, but we're down, you know, you wouldn't think of it having these kind of wild, unpopulated areas like this. I mean, there's a couple of farmhouses around, but we're out here, you know, and everything above us here on these mountains, on the Great Smoke Mountains, is just basically wilderness. And it's so cool to see, I've never, got to spend time on the east coast in an area that is kind of untamed like this so especially in the winter time just the solitude that you have out here on a day like this yeah you, know? you don't have any other people out here floating or swimming or anything it's just all to ourselves let's go catch some fish all to ourselves <laughs> okay i'm gonna start close here make my first cast nice and close oh i'm frozen oh that one's gonna eat it This is fishy. Lots of fish. Oh, shh. That's the longest cast I made yet. Ooh, that's a fish rolling. Oh, I'm getting bit. I'm getting bit. Oh my God, they're everywhere. Oh man. Missed my first one. I missed my first one. Oh, he just drained her. Took a minute though. It was actually a little bit longer than I expected it to. Oh, got to learn how to cast again. Look at the colors on that thing out there. Oh man. Oh, look at this thing, everybody. Oh my gosh. Look at this thing. What a cool fish. Look at that brown. Look at those beautiful red spots on that. That is absolutely incredible. What a unique looking trout. These things are such cool little creatures. It's something that you know we have in the Pacific Northwest a little bit, the brown trout, but we don't get them in abundance in a lot of places. And in most of the case, they're either one, really hard to catch, or two, not that big. So getting something like this so easily, right off the gate, <laughs> what a blessing. Look at the creator for that one. Look at those fins. Look at those spots. That is so cool. Okay, going back in for round two, everybody. The wind is a little brutal, so what I'm doing here, I'm trying to trying to manage it just enough for my line's not getting pulled down the river too fast and kind of messing with my float there. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the opportune times here, really like the first third of my drift and then at the, the, the three quarters of it, and I'm making a fast, quick mend and laying that line right back down on the water. That way my line's sticking in that same direction to the water and keeping that straight point of contact. I'm not getting a big belly down below it, and I'm not... I'm not getting my line getting pulled down river too quickly, which would be messing up my drift. So I'm doing a pretty good job of keeping my line taut, keeping it in the right direction. That way I can be quick on those fish biting because that last one really bit for a long time. You can see that bobber was just bobbing, bobbing, bobbing. And then I finally actually went all the way under and connected on him. So, so sometimes with that downriver wind like that, the timing of your men can be super, super important to, to even being able to get a good presentation to those fish. Oh, same spot, same spot. I'm going to get redemption. He's eating it. He's eating it. He's eating it. <laughs> Strip me. Strip me. That one got a free lunch, everybody. Fish on, guys. There we go. Got another one. Ooh, that's a bigger one. Oh, my reel is back spinning. <laughs> Had my anti reverse on. There we go. Another rainbow. Another perfect fish for lunch. Get the groceries, baby. <laughs> Grocery run. <laughs> oh, what a cool spots on him, though. Wow, he's got some beautiful spots on him. It's really interesting, guys, those spots on him. And like Jordan just said, it took him a few minutes to warm up. You know, we fished this hole for 10, 15 minutes before we had a bite, and we just caught three back to back, so they're getting fired up out there. Wow, that one hit it on the run. Almost on the run. Oh, baby. Oh, wow. Looks like another brown. One thing I'm noticing for sure, every fish that Kyle's caught up at the head of the hole so far has been a rainbow. 
everyone that I'm catching at the bottom of the hole seems to be a brown. Very interesting. It kind of shows the different structure that those fish like to sit in. That slower water seems to be more suitable for these browns. And that, that little bit faster, quicker water seems to be where those, I don't want to ruin my GoPro here, seems to be where those rainbows want to be. And right before I kept that one, the last one, Kyle came down and said that around here they like to release those browns. So I, I made a point to make sure to let that thing go, revived it, and, and let it swim free. But here's another one for us. Not as many red spots on it, but absolutely gorgeous. Try to keep my wool gloves off of that thing. All right, let's get him back in there. See you later, bud. Ooh, he kicked me. Got a little payback. That one just hit it on the fly, too. And I just shallowed up. I shallowed my bobber up just a little bit so I could get it through that tail out where I was seeing those bigger fish roll. And it worked. Let's get it back in there. Oh, there he is. Got him. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one again. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. This, is a brand, this little Salilo rod, man, it's so much fun to fight these fish on. These browns are scrappy, too. They just kind of bulldog you and stay deep. Once again, another brown. Neato. Wow. Look at that thing. This thing has just an incredible red band down it. Look at that. What a blessing. See you later, bud. Oh, got him. Got him. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a jump. What a jump. He's a cartwheeler. Oh, he's a cartwheeler. Power stance. Power stance on this one. Looks like another beautiful little rainbow. Oh, goodness gracious. Wow. That is just a cute little dude there. See you later, bud. Thanks for the show. That guy was a showman of, of sorts. Hello, everybody. Got ourselves a nice little fire going here. Warm up our fingers a little bit, get this trout cooked. And we're gonna actually put the cooking of this trout, if you wanna see this recipe, go down into the link in the description and you gotta subscribe to XXL Chrome Chasing. And you can go over to his page and see how he's gonna do this fish up for us. It'll be pretty cool. So go down there, subscribe, check out this recipe. Got quite a few fish out here, guys. So while our food's cooking, we just rigged up this GoPro here on a float. So we're gonna float this over and see if we can get some cool underwater footage for you guys. The way that this day turned around from going from miserable cold and just kind of defeated, honestly, we didn't really we didn't really get to do what we came to do that first morning. We were getting our butts handed to us, honestly, but to show up to the river and start smacking the trout like we did was such a relief. And so as we started catching more and more, we we're like, what can we do here? We've already caught enough for the camera. It's just, you know, we can't have bent rod in that job, bent rod in that job. And so we like, man, what, let's fly that drone up in the air. Let's get an underwater camera and let's see what we can make happen for you guys. on the GoPro. Ah, I might have forgot my spawnies back at the, at the bank. Oh, look at that. The secret stash, baby. Oh my God, I just got lucky. Oh, I just got lucky. I thought I was gonna have to hike back to the bank. at all <laughs> man I hope we got that I hope we can see that fish come eat that because this is not a bad fish oh he's getting me in the he's getting me in the weeds oh. Oh. <laughs> jeez check this out guys this is a beautiful rainbow here oh man 
That's actually a gorgeous rainbow. <laughs> oh, and he came off. He came off. That's okay. We're gonna let him go anyways, but that was a nice rainbow. <laughs> GoPro bobber, baby. <laughs> You see that? Something hit it that fast. Oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez. <laughs> oh, oh, those look delicious. Oh, little taste. Mmm. Those are perfect. Are they done? Oh, they're done. Yeah. Ooh. They're done. <laughs> so, I broke my fork. Did you, did you find the other one? No. I just used a broken one. <laughs> it's called recycling. Yeah, it's not boogers. It's not icicles. It's cold out here, guys. It might look beautiful, but it's freaking cold today. This is just the way to do it, too. 21 degrees. <laughs> Oh, you're making a campfire, but the the awesome thing is is we're so alike that we'd be out here doing this Regardless of what we're filming and we just love sharing this with you guys Yeah, and just it's just such an awesome way to enjoy the outdoors And we hope you guys really enjoy it too for those of you that aren't fortunate enough to have a place like this close to home I hope you enjoy all the the virtual reality of coming along on these trips with us And I know I've sure had a blast and thank Kyle so much for having us down here and doing this because it's just the beginning of this journey But it's been an incredible one so far As we continued to double up and catch trout after trout after trout into the sunset, I kind of took a second to step back and just look around. And I think it's something that anglers don't do enough when they travel to a destination, and that is just look up from the water. And you know, you look around, like look at this place we're sitting right now. It's so tranquil. And, and I, when I think of the East Coast, especially being from out west, there's so much open country out west, and especially Oregon, Idaho, California, Washington, there's so much land that it's just vast and there's nobody. And I didn't, ever con I didn't really consider that would be the case out here in Tennessee of all places, being so close you know, to the East Coast. And, and, but to get out in that solitude and watch that sun go down in these giant smoky mountains was something I'll never forget. That, that one evening kind of washed it all over and kind of brought to the, to the thought that, that we really were in a wild place and we really were in, in a place of solitude and peace. You know? And it was so amazing to get to spend that moment with my brother and the camera guy, Sean, and soak it all in after having an incredible day of fishing, which we really didn't expect to happen. So the next morning comes, a lot of pressure now. Conditions have changed. We got like a 45 degree weather change. All the snow is melted off. It is dead calm out on the lake. And as we pull out onto the middle of the lake, we start seeing all these stripers start to splash and all these little minnows and all these little shad jumping around. And we knew it was game time. So this is how we like to get our morning started here in Tennessee. Oh! Oh, he didn't do it. <laughs> Antics are over, let's go fish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, beautiful morning out here. We're gonna slow troll some shad, and some live bait, and some shiners. We're just gonna go about a half mile an hour and just creep around until we find some sharks. Woo! Woohoo! Just gonna give this guy a little cast straight back. Keep him up high first thing in the morning. Now it's getting a little lighter. You can see all their seagulls everywhere. It's that early morning feeding frenzy. It's like the opposite of the witching hour right now. I don't even know what we'd call it. Comment below, what would you call the opposite of the witching hour? The warlock hour. Oh, 
Oh god, here, what's happening? Gone. Let him go, let him go, let him go. Do I touch the drag first? Yep, well, grab the rod now. Yep, now get him. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> 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 he just did. This is about when we get our first fish. It doesn't know it's hooked yet. Not quite yet. Oh, brother. <laughs> Got him, baby. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, man. What a relief, dude, after a day like yesterday. Oh. Such a struggle. No. I don't know if this thing even knows he's hooked yet. Or it's just not huge. I don't know yet, but it's a striper. Oh, that's a pretty good head shake. See, oh, see that? Oh, look at work at it. That was cool the way they pulled the line off like that. She said that drag super, super loose like that, which is so unique as it's more of a live bait style yes, right you yep. really want to do that with live bait yep it, it was a tough learning curve you know just like try because if you bend it and come off yeah because yeah, yeah. you know you get excited because they rip but if you grab it too soon then they just pulls the bait right out of their mouth so you just got to be patient just ooh, ooh vicious rainbow you gotta get the big <laughs> this is so cool what a setting too it's so calm out here Oh, I don't know. He, I really feel like this thing doesn't even know what's going on yet. He's going to see the boat and go, ape it nuts. Oh. Board removal. Oh, yep, now he knows. I'll loosen that drag a little bit more. Come on, stay out of our line. He really wants to go in that other line. Oh, I think we're gonna be okay. Coax him in to go in here. Submarine, submarine, submarine in me. Bendo, I'm all bent up. I'm all bent up. <laughs> What's that? What did I hit? Oh my, my knot. Oh no, he's right here. Oh, brother. <laughs> That was worth it, everybody. Holy smokes. Let me stick this rod over here. Yep. Look at that thing. It almost looks like a redfish. <laughs> I'm gonna take my gloves off here. Wow. What do you think? What are about 15? Oh. 15, 20, they probably weigh a little bit differently with the I'll, shape. I would say 20 for sure. Wait wow. till you pick them up. Oh, addicts. <laughs> what the F? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at it! Holy smokes! Wow! Look at that blue coloration. Those gnarly fins coming off the back. I love that blue color. It's such a unique, that like baby blue shine to it. Whew, I gotta set this thing down. It's heavier than hell. <laughs> Aren't they heavy? Yeah. Man, it's like you don't expect now, it. He's this big just because he's eating so much bait, huh? Yes. Yeah, so, like oh, that's yeah. just how thick, that's just how full he is already. That just morning. goes to show you how well fed these systems are and how much wow. bait's actually in here. It's crazy. Wow. First one's in the boat and it's a giant. Honestly, I didn't expect to be so blown away by these fish. The color of them is what really drew me to be awe-inspired. This beautiful like aquamarine blue color of the gills and the, and the scales on these fish is just something I'll never forget. I could have sat and looked at that fish forever. I really want one on my wall now. I want one mounted so that I can look back up at that thing and get to enjoy it forever. But such a special moment. And I'm so grateful to you, Kyle, and to Marlon for letting me come on this trip. This is a, a trip that the Godfather himself was supposed to be on. This is one of his bucket list fish that he's talked about since the first day I met him. And I'm so fortunate that we got to come out here, especially this time of year, and enjoy it with a buddy like Kyle and catch a fish of a lifetime on the very first freaking pass of the day. So essentially, it's kind of like the salmon. You know, they have the striped bass in the ocean and they just stocked them in these reservoirs, just kind of like they did salmon in the Great Lakes. So, yeah. Very cool. All right, let's get this big guy on his way. Oh, I'm gonna revive him a little bit here. The water is not warm. Wow. Looking at him from the top too is like a ghost. 
Oh, nope, now he knows what's going on. Later, buddy. Cool. Looks like a football swimming away, dude. Woo! Heck awesome. yeah, yes, heck sir, yeah, addicts. <laughs> well, dude, he's trying to get get all weird. Like he starts telling us like stories about how they're his clients and like their life stories. We're like, oh my gosh, you guys. Yes. You let it go. You let it go. You let it go. Dang it. Yeah, we just had a good rip. Dang it. He let it go though. Just because we weren't focused. Yeah, we weren't focused. We're talking porno. <laughs> Back here, Jim uh, Jabbering. Uh, uh. <laughs> Back here, Jim Jabbering. The other day, I scored one of these things, and they are unbelievable. Hot fries. You know, like a mix between them. Mmm. Like a mix between a uh, Funyun and a fry. But it's spicy. I think it's gonna earn a new name. It's like a f spicy Funyun fry. <laughs> Pretty slow today, man. Crazy. Seems like such a perfect day for it. Yeah. Any That's kind, of, any go. kind of fishing. Oh my God! There was another big boil right there. And we're coming into a really good spot though. So as the day started out super hot, it's kind of slowed down now. But the conditions are perfect. Like I was saying, a lot of times with these fish, it's really dependent on the weather, having that overcast kind of, oh, here we go, it's all there, it's all there, what we're talking about it. Ah, talk to Vaughn, yes! Yeah, man! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That a boy. Yeah! Oh, <laughs> Stay with him. So good. All right, guys. There Ooh. we go. Almost to the foot where we caught the last one. Oh, oh that was so cool. And you could just tell as soon as we had just was throwing that jerk bait because we started seeing him rolling around us. Yep. And I'm sitting there talking to you guys. And I looked right over his head, and that rod tip was just bouncing. And now we're all bent up. <laughs> Got him. Yes, we've had a long guys. We've been we've been working for it. We had a nice bite we missed a little bit ago, but finally got another fish on the line. I might be bigger than the last one. It's hard to say. I don't know. Got a nice head shape. Just trying to you gotta really this is where it gets tricky guys when they dive like that because there's so much wood down there. Oh, you gotta put it to them. <laughs> oh, got so some cool. bend though, baby! <laughs> he does not want to come up. No. He said, I'm going back down. Great. Yeah, that might be bigger. Dude, I don't that, know. Those head shakes look really long. I did not, yeah. So a lot of times addicts with any fish, you can sometimes tell the size of them just by how far that rod bends when that fish makes that head shake like that. We talk about it all the time. We said, look at that head shake. <laughs> and when that fish moves back and forth, you'll actually see the distance in between as that rod goes up and down. And it kind of gives you a sense of how big the fish might be. Board here. Good job, Max. Oh, he's dogging me, baby. Oh, he's dogging. I'm excited to see this thing. All right, we're about to get a look here. He's coming up. Here we go. He's coming up over here. He's staying down on me. Oh, he looks heavy. Here we go. Oh god, oh god. Come on, do it. Let me do it. Oh, got him! Oh, <laughs> Billy! Heck Look yeah! Billy. Woo! Wow. There we go. That thing is just so clean. This one's a lot more lively. Oh, goodness gracious. We're gonna have to get Jordan Jibber Jabber more because oh. he talked that one right on the oh. line for us. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the stripes on this one too. That's so unique looking. It looks so much different than the last one. Now, can you tell the difference between male and female? Not I, really. Not. It's hard to say. Yeah. Oh. There you go, brother. Just beautiful fish. Just love those cool iridescent colors on them. Are they cool? That's so unique, man. Just a great fight too, man. Ooh, Jordan talked that one right on the line I for did. us. I did. I love when that happens. <laughs> Okay. Oh, 
big guy. Oh, oh he's ready. Oh, there he goes. Wow. Woo! Woo! Submarine. Back down. <laughs> Back down he goes. That was awesome. Oh, nice job. Thanks, brother. That was a little teamwork. Wow. Woo. Finally, broke okay. up the action, had a little low, but that's what we're out here to find, some good stripers. It's time for a Muddy Buddy pretzel bite. Ooh, yummy. That's what I'm talking about. So what do you know, once again, our guard's down, we're all tickled pink, we got a few nice fish in the boat, and the next thing you know, we start hearing this sound, and we all kind of look at each other, and I, I didn't even think anything of it, because this drag on the reel didn't make a lot of sound, but we hear, and then sure enough, we turn around, and that back rod is absolutely buckled over. Oh God, he's ripping. He's ripping. Oh, he stopped. He's crazy. He's coming back at us. There's a lot of wood here, too, Jordan. So oh, frick. He's going by the bank, too. Oh, God. Oh, God. He's really going. Big fish, guys. Like a little heavier. I'm feeling good, though. I can tell it's not too heavy. Oh, God. It's like they know where they're going, too. A little tighter. Come on, get up here, getting towards the surface, away from that wood. We all heard it, but I didn't quite know what we were hearing. I didn't either. And all it was was <laughs> Wow, okay, he's up by the surface here. I like that, I like that. Okay, wow. Yeah, that is really big. Yep, I got him turned this way, but I'm not, I can't really do much to him. He is really wide, wow. Just in the twilight of the day too. It's just we're just looking around, just thinking about how beautiful it was out here. Oh man, it's heavy. Dang. That was just so crazy. Oh, it was so fast. He was going so fast when we realized he was on there. Like you said, I, we didn't even know what was going I didn't on. Even understand what sound we were hearing. <laughs> okay. Straight down. Yeah, this thing is very heavy. Look at that head shake. <laughs> oh God. River monsters, baby. <laughs> Dude, that is a heavy fish there. <clears throat> Bendo. Bendius Maximus, as the Romans called it. About to get a look, I think. Maybe not. Nope, nope, he's leaving. He's leaving us again. <sighs> oh my God, I gotta look. I gotta look. It is huge, dude. It is huge. It is huge. <laughs> it's huge. Come on. Come on. Oh, man, that's a good one. Oh, come on. Oh, oh! oh brother. Ow, ow. Yeah, baby, that's a good one. <laughs> nice, dude. Yes. Look at the colors on that fish, dude. The big one is in the net. We got the fish we came for. And what a relief. It so often does not happen that you go to a destination, whether you spend the most amount of money possible to go to it and try the hardest and spend weeks doing it, you don't always get that fish of a lifetime. But it happened for me, and I could not be more thankful. Success. Wow, fish number three. <laughs> They're just getting bigger. <laughs> Coming in. <laughs> oh gosh. Jesus. That's gotta be getting close to 30, eh? I would say, yeah. Let's see if I can even pick him up, world. Oh! 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 Holy shnikes. What a creature. What a creature. Oh my goodness. What a special fish. Again, I can't get over that iridescent like aqua blue and those gills. It almost looks like a bull redfish, doesn't it? It's, These ones in yeah. particular are so unique. Not that I've ever seen a bull redfish in my life, but you know, if I had. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at that thing. Woo. Okay. I think I can hold up here. Oh, just kidding. We got a little bit. <laughs> That's okay. Son of a gun. That, <laughs> that one wanted okay. to go back, everyone. 
But I have a feeling now that we found the little donut zone that we're gonna get another one, dude. What a beautiful yeah! fish. Yeah! What a beautiful Heck yeah, fish. Thanks. Awesome <laughs> day, guys. Let's go, world. <laughs> So it was the day wore on, the bite really started to die off. It got to about noon, one o'clock, and Kyle's like, man, you know, Maggie didn't get to go fishing with us yesterday. Let's hit the truck and let's go back up to the river and see if we can find some more trout to get into. After working hard the first day, it was so awesome to finally get on some good stripers the second day. And it was so awesome to see the enjoyment that Jordan had and him so excited because being able, that's why we do this, is being able to share other fisheries with other anglers that love it as much as we do. We made it to our new destination. And look at what we're pulling out here. We're going trout fishing, everybody. So I got my, my jig on here, my little twitching jig. This is a prototype Sink It series um, with a little bit bigger head, quarter ounce. And then I got my fixed float and my micro worms. So let's see if we can bring our Northwest tactics out here and get her done. Okay, switch to a black. Black addicted worm here, little mini worms. Figured this river probably has some natural leeches in it. So I went to the black worm, little red head. I'm gonna switch my, my twitching jig over. I thought I got hit on this one already, but I'm just gonna keep it handy. And I'm gonna go to a real sculpin pattern. Just like old Bill Herzog showed me. And these guys, a little sneak peek, these are just promo boxes, but this isn't the jigs that will be in them, but this is a little sneak peek into what might be coming out soon here with the addicted products. We got all these really neat little jig boxes here come with your preloaded jigs ready for the whole season but i'm going with the actual sculpin look here looks like a little fish that might be living in the river here these fish might be keyed in on eating these things this time of year but like you saw before they only eat only the big ones eat this okay let's do it Oh, he slammed it, dude. Come back for it. The jig's working. There's one. Oh, oh, it's a good one. <laughs> a one. Look at that little shiny thing. <laughs> great way to start the day right there, guys. Or start the afternoon, I should say. Had a great morning of striper fishing. Now we're catching some trout. I can get my hand wet for him. That looks like a nice wild rainbow right there. Just a little whippersnapper, but that's a start right there. You guys go with the bobbers first. Let Max go first, and then I'll come behind you. Sounds like I want to get one on this jig. Let's get him. Gonna be bobber down, baby. Oh! <laughs> Instant. <laughs> he came back for it. Wow, look at the setting right now. Just serious like snowfall, sleet coming down. I don't feel like I'm in Tennessee, that's for sure. So I was bound and determined, as I said a minute ago, to try to catch these fish on some Northwest tactics this time. I wanted to get them on our addicted micro worms and I wanted to get them on those little Bill Herzog twitching jigs. And it was really, I just haven't been able to stop thinking about it since the last time I had a really fun day twitching those jigs for trout. And I thought, man, there's a lot of browns in there. Obviously, I'm gonna see what I can do to try to catch these fish. Oh, there's one. The whipper skipper jacker. <laughs> what do we got here? A little brown, guys. Nice. This is a little guy, but he's pretty though. Let's get another one. So what you're telling me is I should use a sponge. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Oh, that's a pretty one. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a little better one. 
Oh, check out the colors on this one here. Wow, is this one pretty. I just got some really vibrant spots on him. That's a nice little wild rainbow. We're gonna get him going right back. Little like eight mil beads work really good too. <laughs> some not jig. I don't know though. I haven't like really tried. I didn't. Them. I didn't get bit a single time through there. I'm not. I mean, I just haven't tried them too much, you know. Well, it wasn't working. Obviously, I keep looking down river, and Maggie's got one, and then Kyle's got one, and then Maggie's got one, and then Kyle's got one. And then Maggie's got one. Whoa, look at that one. And then Kyle's got one. That one's kind of cool, eh? And so I, I finally decided, I'm like, you know what, I need to get away from here. Obviously, their tactic is working much better. I need to put some distance in between us, go up river, and see if I can try to find a little pocket of water. Okay, everybody. Enough is enough. I'm making my own way. He said, yonder, yonder up a holler over here. Here's a, here's a rock there. And next to that there rock, there's a fish there that I should probably try and catch. But really, the truth of it is, I'm just getting away from the slave fest down there. He's got another one on already. I can't get a fish in as well, edgewise. They are just tearing them up. So I'm, on, I'm making my own journey. I'm starting my own village up here. I'm going to go check it out. See if I can't find us a good fish. See this little lane over here is just a little crack in the rocks kind of coming off of this ledge here. Oh, got him, got him already. Oh, got him. I found my own way. Found my own way. It can be done. Yes. Yes, I made it happen. Oh, the beauty of a rainbow. Oh man, how cool. Really neat little creature. Try to not touch this thing with my gloves. What a beautiful fish. See you later, bud. Wow, dude, look at that. Holy sh! That's pretty, man. Wow. Trout piling in this hole. I don't know what it is. Oh, dude, what did you see? Oh, did you see that? Damn, dude! Oh. oh, there he was. Son of a gun. Oh, oh. Oh, goodness gracious, I can't keep him on, addicts. I can't keep him on. Oh, I watched him move for it. Oh, and I lost him. You can almost see them out there, guys. I can see these little lines of fish out here in front of me. That is so cool. There's so many of them. Okay, I'm about to go into them. I'm gonna three, two, one this. It's gonna be three, two, one, right there. Nope, just kidding. I was kidding. I meant right there. Oh, just kidding, still. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh yeah. Oh, oh shit. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a tail. Oh, I lost him. Oh, oh my God. He swam away with it almost. That one, he dang near pooped it out. He's still coming back for it though. There he goes. He's got it this time. Oh, no, just kidding. He doesn't have it. Lost him. Got him. Oh, 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 o
You little brown. Take me to Brown Town. Coming all the way to Brown Town for this one. Mm-hmm. What a beaut. What a beaut, Clark. What a beaut. Just a little brown. Don't you know? I'm gonna try to do this without breaking the sack. Sweet. I did it, everybody. You saw it. I did it. Okay, last sack, everybody. This is all I'm giving it. This is my last two raw. It's getting dark. My hands are freezing. Get my butt whooped out here. But that's okay. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see any of this. I don't know if you guys can see this. But the water is literally coming up as we speak. And I'm stuck in the middle of the river here. I think it's time to get the heck out of here. Oh, I better get out of here, everybody. This is dangerous. This is dangerous. dangerous I'm stuck in the middle of the river here and it is rising fast look at this this is crazy this is crazy this is crazy we're gonna die wow wow how crazy everybody out of nowhere they just jacked the water up this is all dam release but literally out of nowhere I'm standing out there on my rock enjoying my day Oh, that was a fish. Got him! I got him! <laughs> On the river rise! What a way to end it. I just said to the GoPro here that this is going to be my last sack, my last spawny. And then I looked over and I'm damn near getting washed out of the middle of the river. That could have been really bad. But what a way to end the day. Incredible little brown. Time to go get some dinner. Yeah, that was so crazy, dude. Wow. I was like standing out there and I could hear something. And I was like really getting in the zone because I actually was catching one. And I was like, I started getting noisier and noisier. And then I heard you wave. I thought you just wanted to leave. And then I, I hear you say the water's coming up. And Sean's like, it's already to my knees. And I was like way <laughs> out there in the middle. <laughs> crazy it comes up out of nowhere you know it'll be up 20 more minutes and it'll be up to here it's all owned by the army corps engineers so any day they'll run one to three generators so you really never know what you're going to expect out here that's so cool what a setting to end the day on man give me five my yeah, brother's got a hug <laughs> awesome day dude. great day redemption hell yeah what an awesome day End it with a little snowfall and a few trout. Yeah. Go get a little Bojangles Let's maybe. Go eat. Yeah. <laughs> so since we got here, these guys were telling me about this Southern barbecue joint. And I've always loved barbecue, but I have a hard time deciding really what to get when I go to these places. And when you come to the South or you go to any part of the country, you have to eat the local fare. You can't just go to your normal favorite restaurant. You can't go down to Pizza Hut or go get Taco Bell for dinner and go back to the hotel or the Airbnb. You have to go eat the best place in town. And that is exactly what we did after this long day of fishing. We got some work to do, boys. <laughs> We absolutely pigged out everybody. There was about three days worth of meals here. And so what I actually did, and I want you guys to go check out, go over to my other channel, Stay Fishy Adventures. And we did a leftover recipe on the water over the fire that turned out absolutely delicious. So go check that out. The episode we filmed while we were on this trip is super cool and you guys are gonna love it. I want to say a huge thanks to the state of Tennessee and all the hardworking people around here and the fishermen that keep these fisheries going like this. This has been one of the most fun trips I've been on in a long time and honestly the fishing really blew my mind. I did not expect it to be so good and I never really gave credit to this part of the country for having such amazing trout fishing and I'm super grateful for everybody that makes that happen out here. And again, huge thanks to Kyle and Meg for having us out here and showing us such an amazing time. Be sure to go over to their page, XXL Chrome Chasing, and subscribe to their channel and hit those thumbs ups on those videos because they make a lot of the same sort of content we do and they just are great personalities and they're really easy to love. And once again, thank you so much, Addicts, for watching all these videos and supporting this amazing community that we have. If you want to see more fun videos just like you saw here today, go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on, give this video a thumbs up so others can see it, and comment below, and you can be the comment of the day just like this person right here. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. You stay fishy. We'll see you out there.